You're listening to Truly Unruly with Marcus and Jessica Trufant. Boom, bah, boom, bah. What's up, Trufant? Hey, hey, what's I know up, that was, that was, what was pretty that? random. I don't know. I, uh, it almost sounded like Miley Cyrus. Boom, clap. Don't even go there. The most annoying song ever. All right, go ahead. I enjoyed it. Um, episode 22 <laughs> of Truly Unruly. Hey. How was, how was everything? How are you guys doing? How's life since the last time I saw you guys? I always ask you this. Um, it's pretty much the same. Yeah? Yeah. Busy. Busy. Um, uh, Did you guys get out in the sun at all today? Because it was nice. There was sun nice. today? It was nice today. Oh, okay. I mean, I was in it, but I was... Going to get my hair redone. Oh, so you're hair like redid. Using the hair spot like all day. Yeah, she's yeah. fresh. She's fresh. We see it, Jess. We Tanika. see it. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um. Yeah. So that's what I was doing. Yeah. How about you, Mr. Trufant? How was your day today? Things are well, man. Things are well. Things are busy. Um. I, I actually forgot you had a hair appointment today. Of course. You and I was did. thinking, like, yeah, we. Should probably go to lunch or do something. Or that's that's kind of how I'm feeling. I need a a little. Um, that's a big step going to lunch. It is mm-hmm. during these uh, COVID times and being stuck in the house. But we, I don't know. I feel like we need a getaway or something now. Or, yeah, or, I you think know, so. And going to lunch is the first step. So. Oh God, that's not a big enough step. Baby steps. We used to take trips, just the two of us, and not anywhere exa- like drive to Portland. Right. Or fly to Arizona, mm-hmm. really fly to Cali, and it's been a while. The more kids I, I feel we like had, it's been a while. yeah, kids got activities, the more kids got we stuff, are. and yeah, so we're on the back burner. Yeah. But we, uh, yeah, yeah. how it's about time? We're gonna how, pick that up. How's Gigi with when what she watches the kids? Does she watch all five of them at once, or is it are they split up? Gigi has more control over our kids than we do. And shout out to Gigi and Prather. My mom went to her house and she said, as soon as she walked in, it was Marcus and I on the big screen. And she (laughs) texted me and she said, if you say fuck one more time. Your mom said that? Yes, I told you that. (laughs) And I was like, ah. Beep the dump button. Beep, beep, beep. Right, and I sent her a message back and I was like, ah, fuck, 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 fuck. You know, like, got to do it. But anyways, all right. Grandma. You got to love grandma. Gigi. Well, speaking of uh, kids and all that, today we're going to talk about the kids some, y'all. Found... And here's the thing, Jessica. Your husband found this article. Marcus is contributing. Out of desperation or like what? I'm a part of the show. I'm really getting my fingers into this thing. And um, that's what she said. I'm trying to. uh, Right. If I give you the middle finger. I don't know. I'm, I'm always thinking truly unruly. And, you know, Kale's doing a lot. So I'm like, okay. I am. I just want to try to give my man just some stuff and see if it sticks. I'm not really a creative, but, you know, I'm going to just throw stuff well, at him. See what be, happens. So, you, you are creative in a different Non-creative kind of way? <laughs> no, he definitely um, tapped into his, like, executive uh, producer side because this was actually really good. Mm. I, I'm... I'm I, I'm not I'm I'm not this is no cap but like I'm actually p- proud of this guy. I was like, wow, true. He texts me goes, "Yo, Kel, like Wait, he I, gave you one article wait, and no, you're like, I'm so no, no, proud no, no. of him. He sent me what a, an overachiever. He sent me a couple things. Stroke the he sent me some ego. social media things. Yeah. He sent me an article Yeah, like, hey, what Kel. do you think about he this? Said, I found these things and I was just like, oh shit, my true's over here on his day off doing some research. Mhm. Can you just be happy for him? Well, I'm wondering when this happened. Was it while I was yelling at the kids or while Um, I was yelling at the kids? I think it was while you was doing homeschool and I really don't contribute to that. So, But you contribute in many other ways. Like this. Much appreciated. I was just about to say, I didn't know if you could... uh, Give me a thumbs up because you were kind of just hating on me giving the kill. Oh Anyways, all right. So as we move on, right, right? here we hate, go. So hate, hate. today yeah. we're going to talk about uh, ways to raise mentally strong kids. 
Good job, Marcus. Thank you, Kale. I appreciate that. All right. So there are. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's many different ways and de- many different spaces um, where your kids are going to grow and are supposed to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first one is emotional growth. Uh, visualize the experience of emotions and stress with your children. Parents' efforts to visualize their own emotions can help children understand mental stress as a normal experience and illustrate healthy processes of coping. Right. I think we talked about this in another episode about um, having disagreements in front of your kids. Mm-hmm. Um, that it is healthy disagreements. It is healthy to have disagreements in front of your kids because they watch you disagree and then they watch you resolve the issue or they watch you come back together and it's not like you know this big thing where they separate and don't talk to each other for days and days and days or it escalates into this huge argument so it kind of it gives them coping tools Mm -hmm. and it just shows you that it's okay to have a disagreement as long as you guys come back together find a compromise so yeah no that's huge kids have to see that when parents hide that yeah but that is, is there a certain way you have to go about doing it though because like you said you don't want to like just completely have a blowout in front of your kids it's raw sometimes it is yeah. raw but when they're sitting right there you know you kind of you control it a bit yeah right yeah so I, I think with us, I think we do a, a fairly good job. Um, of arguing in front of our kids. No, well, <laughs> of keeping it pretty PG enough. And right. just like you said, I think it's good for the kids to see things in real life, in real time, in real action, because they take that and then they'll mimic that and they'll kind of take their little, um, I guess, the do's and don'ts. I mean, kind of make it their own, but right. we do a fairly good job of, okay, this is the blowout, but we wait till we get to the room to really have Wait a minute. A, the I real just blowout. said, you don't go to your room. Well, we do do that, but well, it'll start downstairs. Right, yeah, yeah. And, but when we come back and we're together, the kids know that we have resolved it. Are you saying that the disrespectful shit happens behind closed doors? Yeah, for, for the most part. If okay. we can... It's not even that disrespectful. Help it. But um, <laughs> I think it's just, it's, like we said, it's good for kids to see that. And um, Because that's real life. It's not... That's I mean, what I'm saying. It's it, real This isn't life. a movie. This it's is, not a... Exactly. Right. And a lot media. of our behaviors, we learn them from our parents. So if they see us argue and be able to come together and resolve and compromise, they're going to do this. They're going to pick up that. They're going to do the same. Right. So the next one, communication growth. Acknowledge communication as a process and aspire for efficiency. Your goal does not need to be understand all of the reasons for your child's stress. Try as you might, but you'll be unable to read their minds. In moments of disagreement, rather than asserting your authority or questioning their reasoning, you can aspire for communication efficiency by searching for common ground and recognizing larger long-term goals and shared interests. Well, first of all, that was very lengthy and wordy. The hate continues. Okay, huh? would you like me to second of cliff all, note it? <laughs> yeah, second of all, um, I I agree. I agree. It is about having open communication with your kids. And once again, I think we talked about this before. Kids have bad days, right? Just like we do. Kids get pissed off, just like we do. Kids are emotional, just like we are, and so. You have, to, you have to level with them. And you almost have to make them feel like they're making their own... De- let them come to their own decision and just kind of nurture and guide it and always listen and hear them out before you shut them down. Even if you disagree with it. Even if you disagree with it. It's the authoritarian versus the authoritative type parenting. Mm. And the authoritarian type parenting nice. doesn't work. You cannot control your kid. 
They're yeah. completely different human beings. Well, and when you exercise you that the type risk of control over of pushing it, them you run the away. risk of pushing yeah. them further right. away. And then a lot of kids can be controlled, though. But well, it depends on the kid's temperament. Right. It depends on the kid, but. We can't control our kids. Not all the time. But we talked about letting our kids' voices be heard, even if uh, we don't to. agree with them, but yes. we need to let them feel like they matter and right. like their voices are heard, even if we are going to shut them down right after they speak. But right. get out what you have to say, communicate, and then let us know. And then we'll right. go from there. They want to feel like they're autonomous, like they're really making their own decisions and all that kind of stuff. And Okay. Well, and I was going back to what you're saying about, you know, some kids being controlled by their parents. Um, I'm not going to say who, but I have family members where that's kind of the situation. And the kid totally does not like their parents. Rebel. Mm -hmm. Like, and I like, they don't rebel. It's they just, just yeah. when they're finally, when this kid in my family is finally around, like the rest of us. It's always about how much they can't stand their parents, and I'm just like, Jesus. And they feel Christ. stuck, right? Yeah, and it's right. just, and it's it's one of those things. It's it's like a built up resentment. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, over time, I'm like, oh, do you ever go home and go visit? Your no, I don't. You know, yes. it's a lack and of that's, communication. That's though. a lot of I don't know the if reason he's... why kids are so excited to leave. Yeah. Right. And go to college and get the hell out of their house because their parents the whole time was like just completely like just running them. Right. You know, and then it's and then it's parents. I mean, I get it, like, you want your kids to fear you, in a sense, but you don't want your kids, not fear you, but, like, no, like, you know what, like... They need to respect you. Yeah, like, respect you, in a sense, where it's like, I don't want to, I would never want my kids to be, like, scared of me, because then it's like... Yeah. They're never going to be able to come. They're not, they're not going to come to me right. for stuff. Exactly. You know, that's when they get sneakier. Yep. Exactly. You know, that's when they lie. That's mm -hmm. when, when you're a controlling parent. Yeah. That's when that stuff. When that kind of shit happens. And they confide in people they're more comfortable with. Right. And, and I definitely don't want that. As in their that. friends. Right. Yeah. And that's no. Exactly. So that's, that's always been just my personal view as a parent. It's, I'm always trying to like, even though there's times when my son just, fucking drives me crazy and i want to just be like yo right but i have to tell myself like hey like someday he's gonna be a teenager and i'm gonna want him to be able to confide with me and, and yep. be able to like trust and you gotta me. start that now you yeah. gotta start that gotta start yes. it early yep. gotta start yes, it now. practice do. practice very practice important. do you guys have that fear at all with any of your kids i mean because you i've seen you guys <laughs> in, uh, interact with your kids you guys are great with your kids but like is there is there one of your kids that you guys think might be the slight more like mischievous one or maybe slightly more rebellious one? Oh, yeah. All we, of them are different. Yeah. We've so. got a couple of them like yep. that. And one of the ones is the most like me. So uh. it's a consistent bumping of heads and yeah. Have you already like <laughs> mentally prepared yourself for like when she's a teenager of like there might be screaming matches? Well, I well, I think I've already had screaming matches with the other two, so that's kind of like okay. Um, but what I don't want is the sneakiness and yeah. the lying. Yeah, that's oh, that's the one. Right. But this screaming matches. Let's go. So I haven't had a screaming match. There is no screaming match. There, there isn't. It's like, are what do you, you need to scream are for? Are you prepared, Marcus, for at some point, um, and that also depends on, I'm trying to think of like age-wise of how you guys' kids are spread out, because Carmen's a bit older, but at some point, you know you're going to have like a bunch of teenagers and preteen girls all in your house at the same right. time. Right, yep. All going through puberty, all going through ch emotional changes. Yep. Do you ever sit back like as a as a father and it's like, all right, like I know that's when like my my patience meter. Well, I'm a um, I'm a I would call myself a rational thinker. Right, everything is pretty. Um, Here we go basic right and the common sense and this is what it should be so i understand the ups and downs of womanhood but um 
I know this is a losing battle for me and for us as men, but you have to uh, <laughs> continue to find a way. That doesn't mean that the world stops, and I know you're looking at me, but you got to find a, a way to get through it. And what I try to do with the kids, my thing is like, okay, I'm willing to go back and forth with you and they kind of have this battle of wits and you think that you could outwit me and you can out talk me but it's not a thing i'm older than you i've already had these experiences et cetera, et cetera. but i let them talk and i'm okay with going back and forth and i do it in this tone and mm-hmm. i could shut you down in this tone um i don't have to yell and scream but i'm okay with doing that mm-hmm. so, first of all you didn't even believe in pms <laughs> um, let's let's just that's take not it. true yes it is that's not true you didn't believe the, in PMS? what like, i said was I, right what did you just say? because there's pms we can't control it the world you continues think, to move no, right it does not so i said okay i understand but you're still accountable for your actions and what you do but he's getting this now with his daughters and i'm like marcus I know it's that time of the month. And man. I'm like, I, I, you lay off of them. And, and they're like, all probably in sync, huh? Uh, we're all kind of near each other. Yeah. And I'm like, and Marcus is like, I don't care. And I'm like, I don't. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> because the world doesn't care. The world, d- d- you, please. Or your job, your, your boss. No, they don't and, care. Yeah. You're right. They don't care. So that's my point, though. Is that there? But I bet you plenty of people get fired. <laughs> my point that is that there's a fine line. Is that okay? I get it. I understand to a certain point. I mean, I'm a man, so I can never truly understand. I know you. You try. You try going through. Th- you guys try going through this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't have to do that. These hormones. It's like changes. that for a reason. You guys are stronger do, than do you us. You know, there was a study that came out about how they believe that men actually have a form of PMS. I've heard that before too. <laughs> really? Yeah. I haven't heard that. Unless yeah. you I don't agree. Unless you <laughs> bleed agree with it. for seven days after, I don't even want to hear it. I mean it's a hormonal thing at the end of the day, right? But at the end of the day we well, we bleed like we've been stabbed. So I don't know. Maybe you guys do have PMS. You guys just have to just <laughs> fucking take the credit for, like, come on now. You just got to. We don't take the credit. Not take the credit, but you just kind of got to ride on her. Get, stop. Stop, stop, stop. I, I, all I did was bring up an article. The only time you guys have PMS is when you are not getting enough sex. So in a- That's <laughs> when it turns into PMS for you guys. Y'all don't have no fucking PMS. All right. It's called being backed up. What would you... Um, <laughs> so in a perfect world, oh how are men supposed to act and how are dads supposed to act in that situation? Am I just supposed to turn the other cheek to everything? And no, just, you're not supposed to, but you need to be a little bit more sensitive and not ready sensitive. to battle no, them. I get it. I understand, but I'm here to, to you know bring real life into the situation i know what's going on of course but, but they don't know and I, they don't even understand they don't even know what's going on i know and i try to tell them i'm like my thing is, is okay that the, is that I the world's not going to stop you for them down <laughs> you're getting ready to start your period i can just tell i could see it on your face so they don't even know they really don't know but well, we know and so we can act accordingly. I'm trying to set a standard if in around here. So uh not no giving them passes. a pass. Right. Not giving them a but pass. But understanding, understand it but yeah, not pass. But I don't want to come off as being that guy. Yeah. But don't be that I know. Dude. Yeah, don't be that but, dude. But, because you're right. In the real world, they don't really give a shit about that. They don't. But and they'll use it against you. Too. You know what? We should get a we should get two weeks off. No. A week off. Like the week before your cycle, we should get that off just so we don't ruffle any feathers, get <laughs> fired, abuse somebody. I don't think like, the economy could handle that, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have a really, very, very sensitive economy right now due to COVID and all of, we don't need less women in the workforce. Yeah. We need y'all. We need y'all. But we need y'all to act right. So, so. <laughs> I 
I'm still here for right. a week off. Uh, all I was trying to say to bring it back to the kids and everything that was going on that I'm trying to reason and, and um, let them know that the world isn't going to stop just because you feel um, a certain way. Right. But likewise, you have to understand right. that. I do understand it. Yeah. In their mind, yeah. the world is stopping. Yes. Whether I'm it teaching, stops though. or not. I'm teaching. You're trying to teach the life lesson. Right. Yeah. Of yeah, yeah. Like the world right. doesn't I get care. It. Yeah, but yeah, wait. Yeah. I get it. I don't think they care. At that age, yeah, right. The yeah. hormones, they don't, they're yeah, not they thinking don't. about the world doesn't care. They don't give a fuck. But they like, may not seriously. get it now, but. They, you, what, it might. Yeah, it might click. Yeah. My dad told me. All right, you guys ready for the next one? Let's do it. The next one is moral growth. Empower children to make decisions with moral consequences by playing you be the judge. Uh, psychologists believe that by the age of six to seven, uh, children are able to consider complicated questions as justice and fairness. So when you're playing You Be the Judge, children are empowered to make decisions and you are provided an opportunity to influence your child's moral development. Yeah, that's like at six years old when you're playing with another kid and they... Or, or no, or you're sharing a snack or splitting something, they know when it's not fair. Yeah. They understand what's fair and what's not fair. And like you said, as parents, you have to kind of help cultivate that type of moral attitude. So how do you guys combat that with five kids? Is there uh, anything like when, when anyone's like complaining like, well... He got more. Well, she got more. Right. Like, what's the balancing act when it comes to the fairness with there, the amount of kids you guys have? Because I can, I can only imagine. There isn't. <laughs> there isn't. It's like, it's like we're like my bad. I'm sorry. Next time, <laughs> next time you'll get three instead of two. My, I'm right. sorry. W what would you like me to do? You know, ask those, ask those questions. What would you like me to do? How would you like me to make it fair when he's already shoved two out of three candies in his mouth? How would you like me to make it fair? Mm. Another life lesson. Sometimes it's just <laughs> not fair and we'll have to get you back next time. And life mm. isn't yeah. fair. That's just the way it is for now. That's one thing Sorry. that parents need to teach their kids. Right. Because I feel bad for you. I understand, but I mean, it's nothing I could do. Right. You get the six-year-old who doesn't understand about fairness or who is used to seeing, getting their way at home and they fire off on the kid and that's not good. Yeah. Those parents that believe in participation trophies, they're the ones that need to teach their kids <laughs> that it's not fair. Life ain't fair. You're not always going to win. You got to learn how to lose. You too. have to learn how to lose. You have to learn how to lose. And we kind of instilled that through sports. Mm -hmm. That's a huge way to learn that <laughs> you're not going to win all the time. Right. And you're going to lose. You could be bummed out, but you have to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, Go back Snap and try back. again. Snap back. I believe that all kids, it should be required for all kids under the age of 10 to play team sports at some point or another. Because I feel like it, you learn so many lessons. You learn so you learn many how to, lessons. You learn, like, you learn your position, how to play your part, how to be a role player, how to be a part of something. Part of a team. Know, a, team a team player. player. Yeah. Your work ethic. Right. You have to learn balance. So, yeah, I... Yeah. I do agree. I mean, you don't have to do competitive sports, but just any kind of sport. Yeah. Just something that just requires you to work with a team of people. Right. And it doesn't you know? even have to necessarily be a, a, a sport. I mean, it could be anything. That Some you're, kind of club yeah, 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 or a something. A part of a team or a right. club. But you're... Yeah. The debate team. You have no to bring your goods to the table because the rest of your team is counting on you. So being accountable and just being a good teammate. Yes, and, it teaches you and, accountability. And, and, uh, caring about it you know what i'm saying that's that's i think that's a big part a lot of kids don't have that because they don't have to do that a lot of um well that's learned at home poor sportsmanship you learn that from your parents after you leave the game and they're like blah, 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 blah. 
you pick that up. Now some kids, it's in their, some personally. kids, some kids, it's in their blood though because my son gets it from his grandpa because <laughs> I, we don't do that around my house and he still be like, I. I I still be kicking his ass on that foosball table I told you guys about. Right. And like, he just gets so mad. I'm like, yo, like, it's okay, son. And I'm like, good game. You played hard. He's like, no! Do you spin on him? Or, or, oh, or, okay. Absolutely. But I, you're, he's young, right? He's five. <laughs> he's five. Yeah. You know? And but, that's, that's okay. But when you get a little bit older, you have to kind of, you got to kind of. I was like that as a kid. I didn't like to that, lose. Right. And yeah. I'm, I'm, um, I mean, I, I, pride myself on being pretty chill right i don't want oh, you to don't don't even God. but but i've learned to be even but as a kid while i was kind of learning the ropes like i would be going so hard and i wanted to win everything that i would get like so frustrated to be crazy on the playground can you remember cassidy the the angriest you've ever gotten losing something was there like a one time in your life that you still to this very day you're like Damn. <laughs> I shouldn't have did that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Elementary school. Yeah. Playing um, two-hand touch that turned into tackle, of course. On uh, cement? No. On dirt and a bunch of uh, grass and stuff like that. But there was this girl that always used to play with us, right? No, mm -hmm. not a girl. And so um, I didn't necessarily feel like she was pulling her weight. And... <laughs> Ooh, 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 ooh. Things weren't, I knew, I knew it. <laughs> things weren't going exactly how I wanted them to go. And I'm out there, man. I'm doing my thing, right? And so... Um, how dare you judge her? So the bell rings and we're down. And so I, I couldn't handle that. So I went off on the girl, right? <laughs> and again, I'm a chill guy. I'm not that guy, but... I just I'm didn't have your it yet. Parents weren't down at the school. I, I didn't have it yet, and the girl told on me, right? <laughs> and then the teacher came to talk to me, and I felt so bad, and it was terrible. It was a bad situation, and, and um, yeah, I can do better. He still, he still doesn't. That's been my whole point throughout all these episodes. He does not like to lose. Right. He does well, not like to feel like he's losing. No, but he, it was he like can't uh, okay. It. You're a sore loser. I guess we still got time in the bell rings. And I'm like, oh, I've had 10 touchdowns right. and over a thousand yards on yeah. the playground. And it was just her out of your whole team. I mean, it was a long, it long was time. It was just the one girl that didn't pull her weight. Well, that, that's the girl I approached for some reason. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know what happened. Do you remember what you said to her? Um, no, but it wasn't good, though. So yeah. Were you good. cussing at that age? Um, I was cussing at that age, I think. Yeah. More cussing in the bathroom, in the mirror, and stuff like yeah. that. Right. But what age nah, was that? That was in elementary school. So. Oh, I don't watch So you look in the mirror and just be like, fuck! <laughs> you practice it. Yeah, fuck. I don't give fuck shit. <laughs> that's really funny. You went off on a girl. Yeah. I wonder what she's doing now with her life. I, uh, I don't she... think that's funny. No, well, yeah, no. no I I mean, you singled out the, the only I girl. I just on... wonder now. Like, I think she... I was cussing. I wonder if she ever turned the TV on and was like, you see that guy right there? He cussed, he cussed me out. <laughs> I still follow her on social. I wonder if she even knows and if she even remembers this story. I'm going to have to reach out as a matter of fact. If you're like, hey, remember that one time where yep. I just felt like you just wasn't holding it down? Yep. And I cussed you out on the playground? I'm going to reach out. Now that's... <laughs> I'm going to reach out and I'm going to screenshot the conversation. <laughs> but yeah. That's funny. That wasn't good, though. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, this, so lead, this, this leads into our next one, um, our final one, which is confidence growth. Mm. Uh, reward children's quiet ego and encourage mindfulness activities without praises. Facilitating and encouraging experiences of immersion and creativity uh, may be more meaningful to children's mental wellness than receiving positive praise for the outcomes. Instead of praising your child for the product they created, you can speak to their sense of self by praising the children, praising children for qualities like focus, creativity, and enthusiasm. So basically saying you're so smart you're the the smartest kid i know you're brilliant instead it's you did a wonderful job look how hard you work that effort is just amazing you keep pushing you keep that's what that is saying yeah. don't say you're so smart you're the smartest in your class you're the smartest kid ever and i'm mindful of that now Mm. Because I did learn that in a psychology class. But um, I'm more mindful of that. 
Right. It's it's good job. Look at the effort you put into that. That is amazing. Do it again. Right. Mm-hmm. Instead of you're just smart. You're the smartest person and and then they go around thinking I'm so smart. Yeah. I'm smarter than you. I'm smarter than you. I'm so smart. I think so, yeah. um sometimes or I try to make it personal. Like kind of cater my response to um what that child is bringing to the table each one of our kids are different so they do different stuff Mm -hmm. Carmen gets straight A's and this is you know this is what I see you doing Carmen and I can appreciate that because I couldn't do that and this is why so having those type of conversations making it a personal thing so Pretty much saying the same thing. Right, because when you go around, saying, you're, right, you're yeah. Miss Smarty Pants. And yep. they, you know, that Complex. goes to their head. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. take that. And just and making it broad. It's a broad statement. Yeah, right. you're so smart, but right. why and how and all this kind of stuff. Right. Is. And so that is, that's good. That was pretty good. Oh, um, thanks. What? That was good. Um, but yeah. A compliment, no. Kale? Did you hear? I heard it. I was here. You got a receipt. You Save that receipt, buddy. <laughs> You didn't like that, my bad. <laughs> I'll take it back. Anyways, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Just encourage them to keep working. Keep you did an excellent job. That is beautiful. That's wonderful. That's a very creative piece you've written. That's this, 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 and it just it just makes them work harder right. mm-hmm. it makes them encourage others in that way and yeah i think it's about continuing to be yourself be the best you um do what you're doing don't compare yourself or try not to compare yourself i guess that's easier yeah, said than done but yeah. don't compare yourself the things you're doing and what you're accomplishing is because you're being you right so that's why I say making personal. It's about mm-hmm. the individual. It's not this broad. Right. And thing. it's about trying and putting in effort. Mm-hmm. And, you know, well, I was going to say some kids aren't that smart. I or they're just that. smarter at different <laughs> no, things. Right. Some kids take a little bit yeah. longer. That's to, okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's fine. Grasp things and learn things. And so you just have to. Keep encouraging them and just, you're doing good. You keep going. Because what are you going to say? You're not that smart. Yeah, that's abusive. You know? (laughs) And then when you have that parent, you're so smart. So let's just use encouraging words, motivating words, positivity. A bit of Pete Carroll approach. I know you say always go to sports, but yeah. Uh Uh-oh. Go ahead with your sports analogy. No, I was just going to say you want to be accountable and you want to uh, tell the truth, but you do want to, I think that you would want to lean on the positivity side to to push. <laughs> Most people are going to respond to positivity versus being, you know, right. smacked down and beat down. Right. But when you're homeschooling your kids. Sometimes the smack down comes. I try. <laughs> you're doing so good. You're doing. And today I was like. What are you doing? Why are you doing that? It's just, you have your moments. Shout out to all the homeschoolers out there that are just getting by, (laughs) making it happen out there. We appreciate y'all. I'm like, I don't understand. I just showed you. But then they do it, and I'm like, very good. You got that one right. You got that one right. You keep going. That is excellent. Nice. Bring them down, pull them back up. You're the master of that. (laughs) Very much so. Well, this was a good episode, you guys. It's very insightful and enlightening to talk about the kids because we haven't talked about the kids in a while. Right. Yeah. uh, And I'm sure everybody's not going to agree with what we're saying. All good. Episode 22 is in the can. It looks different for everybody, so that's good. Yeah, Yeah, for real. Everyone's situation is different. Everyone's kids are different. So, Mm -hmm. you know, and the difference with you guys is... Y'all just got hella kids. We we just got hella kids, so we really have to let go of control. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. From the outside looking in, I feel like when I see you guys do it, I feel like you guys manage them very well. Um, and the other thing, too, is like, I noticed you, you guys, cool thing about you guys as kids, I can tell they kind of do their own thing. 
So like when I got here, like your one daughter, she was just I could tell she was like on the phone with someone, just kind of chilling right. in the living room, like doing her thing and open door. She goes, Oh hey Kel, I'm gonna go hey. And yeah. I'm like, I just tell they all just kind of like just Everybody's individual. So yeah. Somebody yeah. greeted you that had to have been Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. it was. I t- <laughs> yeah, it was. She's so nice every time she sees me. Right. So nice hey, Kel. She says, hey, Kel, what's up? I'm like, go ahead, what's up? You know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'm not, I feel like you guys manage it well, though. So It's work, and um, it's hard to, to be there for everybody all at the same time, all the time. So they it's work with each taxing. other a lot, and that's right. okay. And now they lean on each other. Yeah. And, and that's good, like, though. That's I think good. that's a good thing. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah no. I, they liter- Whole other topic, but they literally lean on each other. And they're literally, they're very supportive. Of It's weird to me. I expect the sibling rivalry you're doing. They're very supportive. That's the way it's supposed to. But it's, it's weird to me. Cause I, really? How is that? To have that many siblings and you guys are all in competitive sports and some most of them do the same sport and to not be like I'm better than you or you need to step your game up they're supportive they try and bring each other up to where that person it's see, it's, that, it's weird to me see, no, see, but that, I love it that's how it was with right. my siblings when we were growing up it's obviously a little different now but um when we were kids, I think for us, there was four of us. I think it was because we, all we had was, was each other. Right. So, like, it was, mm-hmm. we were always super supportive because if one person did well, it was a reflection on the rest on of us. On everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, it was always like, well, shit, like, you're doing your thing. You know, it goes back to what I told you guys before. Haters are born. Mm. Your kid Out is the a, womb. Just yeah, your kid's a hater because oh. their mama was a hater, their daddy was a hater. You know what? Gr- there is generational There's haterism. Generation, there is generational haters, and that's one thing I could say about and like within my family, the people don't I get along me. with in my family, and the people I don't get along with in my family. Even the people I don't get along with in my family are not haters. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, like. You you pick that up from your parents. Yeah, yeah. like when you're, you're a you know hater, what I'm saying? Or you're watching your it, it's parents, being taught to you. Wait a minute, so, yeah. your parents a fucking hater. If you're a hater, you just don't just come out yeah. and just so suddenly be like, I'm a hater. Nah, like you get that you inherit that from your parents. So like for us, like to to for you to say like that seems weird, like to me, like I think that's normal. I think it's weird when you're like when you are like in competition with your siblings because like that's your sibling like at the end of the day like that's 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 all you got you, know you should I mean? want the best for them yeah, right yeah right yeah. i mean yeah. i've never experienced that with my brother but i know many people that compete with their siblings and it yeah so to have five kids and none of them are jealous you know competing Envious. Mm-hmm. It's okay That's to pin. Huge. I feel like it's okay I've never to compete, it. but to to where it crosses over to it's negativity the, or being nasty. That's when it's the issue, right? Yeah. And it's the jealousy and not right. like, mm, 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 and it's like, why are you, why are you hating on her? But we don't have that, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's it's pretty. Pretty I mean, because cool. yeah, if your if if your sibling wins, your family wins. There you go. That and that's a reflection of your family. So then your whole family. Everybody eats. Everybody me. looks dope. Yeah. Right. Like, so why would you? Yeah, that's, that's right. just weird to me. And I also think it's part of the parents yeah. because we support everybody equally, and we're not overly doting on one child and praising one child, even though our oldest is the model example of how a teenager should be. Anyways, but and so we support them all equally, so they all feel like lifted up and on this pedestal so there's no reason for them to yeah. fight amongst each other that's, okay that's the way it should be but this was good though truly unruly episode 22 deuce deuce deuce, yeah, deuce. 22. Uh, marcus trufant jessica trufant uh my name's kale of course uh watch us on all or watch us on youtube on marcus trufant's uh, youtube channel and of course you can listen mm-hmm. to us on all streaming platforms spotify uh apple podcast um Google Podcasts, you name it. We're on it. Follow Marcus, uh, Marcus underscore Trufon on Instagram, Fat Five Mom on Instagram, I'm Media underscore Kells on Instagram. Watch us every Sunday. Hey, on I, I was going to say it. I was going to say it. I was waiting. I was waiting. I was like, oh. <laughs>
<laughs> Birdman. Yeah. Omari. See, I ain't forget. Uh, watch us on Converge uh, every Sunday. And yeah, this was fun, y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Till next time. Our next episode is going to be our Mother's Day special. Hey. In honor of Mother's Shout Day. Shout out to PMS. There we go. In motherhood. Jesus Christ. All right, y'all. Peace and love. <laughs>